They literally are doing a wedding. Yes, I find a couple having their wedding at an airport. But this is not just any airport. It's beyond impressive. Because here they have the world's tallest indoor waterfall. They even have a full grocery store. And everywhere you look at these terminals is just nice to look at and insanely relaxing. I'm laughing because there's literally spa music playing right now. You can enjoy gardens, waterfalls, light shows, and even pee with a nice view of the planes getting ready for takeoff. Still blows my mind that this is at an airport. Singapore's Changi Airport did not get here by accident, though. You don't see this anywhere else in the world. There are five things it does that helped it become unlike any airport you've ever seen. Singapore Changi Airport has been ranked the world's best airport for eight years in a row, until recently where it fell to third place behind Qatar's airport and Tokyo's Haneda. But if you ask me, I think they just did that to mix up the list a little bit because it was boring that Singapore kept winning. Because in all the airports I've been to, I've never seen anything like this. So there's really not a whole lot of difference between the lounge and this public area. It's incredible. <laughs> in this video, I'm gonna go over the secrets behind creating the world's best airport. Then I'm gonna bring you here, this is called Jewel and it's basically a garden dome, but it's indoors. And we're gonna end by taking a flight through the newest terminal here at Changi Airport. This is where they put the budget airline, but you would never realize it because it is absolutely stunning. Here are five ways they made this airport not, well, feel like an airport. Number one, the first thing I notice is carpeting. Carpeting feels more like you're in someone's house or a nice hotel room than being at an airport. It's also amazing because it has a practical function as well, which is that it absorbs sound. You know, sounds like people rolling their suitcases, women in high heels, babies crying. This all means that you're less likely to feel fatigued as a result of a lot of overall noise. Speaking of noise, this is the only airport I've been to where you will not hear any announcements. You know, this flight to London is now boarding or passenger Thomas is missing. By avoiding all these announcements, this also creates more of a relaxing experience. But that doesn't mean the speakers are silent though. No, it's actually playing music. When you're checking in for your flight and once you go through security and you go toward your gate, they play classical music. But during immigration and security, they actually play like very relaxing spa music. I have to think that that's deliberate. The idea is to really calm you down in a section that is usually the most stressful for any passenger. There are so many different areas to discover in this airport. I mean, it literally has its own butterfly garden. But set aside all the unique features of the airport for a second, even lounging areas here are insanely relaxing. I mean, most airport lounges I go to are not even as nice as the public area of this airport. Between the carpeting, the classical music, the light lighting and even the air temperature, honestly, it's a very relaxing experience so far. The lighting helps passengers feel relaxed because it aims to create a natural lighting feel. And where possible, this airport even has panels on the roof where the natural sun can shine through and bring about light from the sun. Lastly, the technology it uses. For example, go to any bathroom and you will see a screen by the door where you can rate the experience of using the bathroom. By doing this, not only do you feel like you get to give feedback, but you're actually kind of working for the airport. See, if one bathroom gets too many bad rankings, the management knows, hey, there's something wrong with the bathroom, we need to send our crew to go and clean. By having this feature, they kind of make it so a bathroom will never be dirty for too long. In any other airport around the world, I would be told to stop filming, or people would be wondering, why are you filming? But here they get it. I think a lot of people come and film little moments because this really truly is like an airport you've never experienced. Next, I head to the Changi Jewel. This is located at the heart of the airport and is available on the land side, meaning you don't actually need to be taking a flight to enter here. But you do see so many people with luggage here. The cost was $1.3 billion to build this and it connects three of the four terminals. The idea behind this project was meant to increase people wanting to visit here, including locals. This only opened a few years ago, so it feels insanely refreshing refreshing and new. Not to mention it really does feel like you're in a rainforest. My flight isn't for another six or seven hours, but I'm able to check in early. Seven hours before the takeoff, my bag was overweight and I was able to like take out some items and it was able to call my bag heavy. I was able to like put the sticker on like no humans, no humans at all involved. And I checked in like super so many hours in advance and I got my boarding pass and I got my seat assignment, everything. It's crazy. Like usually there, like there are so many different variables and things that like went wrong from my bag being overweight to me checking in early, but using automation and technology, they were able to handle all of that very seamlessly. 
And now the coolest part is, even though my flight isn't for another six hours, I am not like sad about how much time I have to kill because I have all of this to explore. This is the area where the mall and the airport meet. The jewel is on this side and then you have the airport over on this side. I actually got quite lucky that I'm flying one of the airlines where you can actually check in your luggage early. If you're not flying one of those airlines, you'll have to like, I mean, you don't have to, but you'll probably want to drop your luggage here at this baggage storage desk and they'll hold your baggage and then in a couple hours you have to come and get it again. So really lucky with Emirates. Just bought an orange mountain tea. The price was about $4 and I love two things. I love how in Asia there are so many like tea shops everywhere. And number two is I love how they ask you how much sugar you want. So they don't just assume that, you know, you want it with a ton of sugar and that you want it very sweet. Every time you order tea, they say how much sugar and you get to decide. They literally are doing a wedding. They're having a wedding behind me. It totally makes sense that they have a hotel here because imagine you have like a 12 hour or even more or even less, maybe even five or six hour layover here and you want to get a room, you want to get a bed. Um, so it's amazing. It is on, of course, the land side. So you would have to go to immigration in order to access the hotel um, and then go back through. But it's the Changi Airport. Everything is very quick and efficient. This is insane. This is unbelievable. And it's crazy to think that like this is free. This is part of the public area before you go through security or immigration. The airport also has an experience studio where you can play games and kind of learn how to fly. The price is about $20, starting at $20 to enter. So it costs about $6 to purchase a ticket, but all you're really doing is walking across the bridge. Personally, I don't think, um, I mean, $6 is not a big deal, but I don't think uh, it, it needs to be done. I feel like I'm going for a hike right now. It's so beautiful. There's waterfalls everywhere. There's all this greenery. And the funny thing is, I didn't even really plan to go like on this walk. I just saw a little uh, entry point for a view and I went to take the view in and then all of a sudden I'm like walking amidst this garden and walking amidst this jungle. It's so crazy to think like I'm waiting for my flight right now. The feeling of being here doesn't actually get fully captured in video because the sight, the smell, the feeling, you really feel like you're on a beautiful hike or something but you're indoors and it's this really weird feeling because they've captured the lighting perfectly, the greenery, the sound of the water. And what's crazy to me coming from like the US or traveling through Europe is that you can actually do this before a flight. It's like busy, but it's not too crowded. And the other thing I love about it is that you can kind of get lost. I keep like making a left turn, making a right turn, walking up this like platform. I, I literally just walk from the base to the top. Um, and it's really cool. I don't know exactly how I got here, but it kind of does remind you of being in nature. And I totally get why they call it the jewel because it's meant to feel like the crown jewel of the airport. This is Terminal 4. It opened in 2017 and it's not part of the main terminals, but it's easy to get to the other ones. Today I'm flying out of here because I'm flying on a budget airline, so that's where these airlines come. But honestly, this might be my favorite of all the terminals because it has high ceiling and the design is really next level. You can actually see pre-security and post-security all from here. So notice that is where you check in for your flight. That's before you go through security and that's all glass. So you can see them, they can see us. And I don't know, there's something really interesting that just makes this whole terminal feel especially open. But usually it's behind another section and it kind of makes you feel like you're going through a whole nother section in another phase. But there's a really interesting psychological element here where I don't know, I just feel like, you know, it's, it's all part of the same process and I don't feel like it's this big before and after kind of process. You literally don't need to go to an airport lounge here because every part of the airport feels like a lounge. I've been to airport lounges in some places like New York, which are literally not as nice as this public area of this airport. And even though this is a luxury experience, this isn't like so over the top. I mean, they even have a 7-Eleven. The main center point of this terminal is just like relaxing little areas to sit, to relax, to take naps, to make phone calls, to be on your laptop. Shopping is a little bit off to the side. Food is definitely a little bit hard to find. So where are the actual gates? Well, the gates are on the perimeter of the terminal area. They kind of see it as like, do your relaxing, do what you need to do, go to the bathroom, grab a bite, and then go to your gate when you're really ready to board the flight. It took only 10 minutes from taxi to duty free. That means checking in for the flight, dropping my luggage, going through immigration, and going through security. 10 minutes. I really can't imagine anywhere else in the world where the process would be that fast. 
And remember, this is the budget airline terminal. Most airports you go to really go out of their way to make you wanna spend money to buy food, to buy drinks, to buy desserts, and of course shopping. But here, the food court is upstairs, kind of off to the side. It's kind of almost hidden, um, which is really interesting. You can't like find any, you can't really find many places to eat on the ground floor. And then when it comes to shopping, of course there are many stores, but even those are kind of like off to the side. They're not super prominent. And it's kind of beautiful. It makes you just like more relaxed. And it seems like the primary space at this airport is being used for relaxation. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments, what was your favorite part of the video and of the airport experience? And do you think that this should serve as an example for more countries and airports around the world? I've seen some of the new terminals in New York and Los Angeles, and while they're new and they're modern, they are nothing like what you just saw. So I'm really curious your thoughts about how airports can innovate, evolve, and do you think Singapore will stay on top for years to come? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you.